Welcome to the podcast. Good morning, South Thai. Welcome to the podcast. The podcast is more for Shamat. The theme of the podcast. Welcome to our podcast. Welcome to the 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 podcast. Welcome My name is Asaf, and I'm delighted to open our second episode of the podcast. Today, even though this podcast is a young podcast, uh, we're going to do something somewhat of a special episode, just because we want to shake things up. So today I have with me guests from English-speaking world, although you might think that uh, all these cultures are very similar, if not identical, then I'm sure my guests will surprise you. Before we begin, let me remind you that we are live every Monday on YouTube, and if you like the podcast... Please, please help us out by subscribing, liking, and sharing. And of course, you can reach out to us with ideas, questions, and answers about your culture and what we talked about via all channels of social media. As I said, today's topic is somewhat vague, but nonetheless interesting. And we have guests from English-speaking tr- countries. Obviously, there are more English-speaking countries, but you guys represent five of what's called the Big Seven, right? We're only missing Ireland and New Zealand. And also we can say historically that you're, you were all, all were either present or in the past British colonies. So uh, we'll, I'll start, you guys introduce yourself. We'll start with the colonizer. Uh, <laughs> I am indeed the colonizer, loyal to the Queen. My name is Jessie Devon, originally from London. Uh, hi, I'm Shoshi, uh, originally Canadian from Toronto. I'm Pam and I'm originally from South Africa. I'm Asha, I'm the Australian here. And I'm Rebecca, representing America. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. This is a really big topic, so we're going to have to break it down to a lot of tiny little bits. I'm not part of any of your cultures, right? But I still, um, when I, I mean, when I think of um, English, the, Eng- the English-speaking world, the Anglo-Saxon English-speaking world, it seems somewhat of a monolith if even though i don't really i know it's not true but i can't tell apart an australian from uh, someone from south africa let alone south africa um, a new zealander or an australian so why don't you guys tell me um when you travel abroad what are the the cultural differences that you encounter <laughs> that's a big question so, i think that the, the accent is quite easy actually um but the behavior my, um I'm, I'm going to get some enemies here, <laughs> but uh, I find that the, the British, Australians, New Zealanders, South Africans are far more polite, quiet, um, apologetic for just doing their normal behavior, whereas Americans and Canadians um, are far more loud, um, brash, uh, in your face, I'm trying to say arrogant in a nice way. Uh, you, you, you can just tell an American or a Canadian by the volume that they speak at, um, even if you can't decipher what... Yeah, that, that being said, I always find, and again, no offense to my dear American Sorry, friend, I'm Rebecca here, <laughs> but that I always, I always find that sure. I can't tell the difference between a Canadian and American yeah. accent normally. However, mm. I always find when I'm talking to what I believe to be an American and I kind of find I'm getting along with them quite well and culturally <laughs> we just seem to bond. I go, are you Canadian? And like, more often than not, it's true. So I, I think there's something in that that I need to learn the difference between the accents. As, as the yeah. Canadian in the room, I'd like to say that's usually my experience. Yeah. Um, and I find uh, I find that I'm, Im- I'm immediately liked more as soon as I say, oh yeah, I'm from Toronto originally. By everyone, doesn't matter what country it is, if it's English speaking or, or in Israel or wherever. Um, Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm much more liked. I like to think of myself as not incredibly loud. Because um, uh, you're Canadian. Because I'm Canadian. Although I will say that, um, you know, small thing that maybe like people outside of Canada wouldn't know, but people from Toronto specifically, as opposed to other parts of Canada, have a reputation of being more American. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Specifically Toronto. Specifically Perfect. Toronto. Yeah. Okay, but when you guys think of Amer- I'm going to be your um, I'm going to be your advocate now. But when you think of Americans, <laughs> yes, I mean, we can take care of ourselves. No, I mean, this will be really clear. What I'm thinking is that th- there's a specific stereotype of Americans yeah. that you you everyone has in mind when they think of Americans, right? It's the mm. you know the loud, usually either Southern or kind of tech, maybe even Texan kind of American that you know that's made fun of. What's called America. 
as yeah, opposed to no, America. No. Right. So what? But what do you have as a stereotype mm -hmm. about Australians, South Africans? Uh, sure. So first of all, I think I, I like to remind people. Uh, when they when we generalize Americans, I think it's a little tricky. As, as Saf said, like we think of you know maybe Southern or this one type, but we're actually 350 million people. So um, I think maybe it's more accurate to generalize like New Yorkers or Californians or you know because we're really that big. Um, in terms of <laughs> in terms of our stereotypes of um, English speakers outside of America. Um, you know, I think the British, we find you very polite, which I actually really appreciate, but maybe we also don't like, Louis. No, <laughs> not, not much, not much. Um, I think, uh, Americans find the Brits polite, a little stuffy. Maybe they lack a sense of humor, although I really appreciate a British sense of humor. Again, I think there's, there's, um, nuance, um, Canadians are our neighbors, whether they like it or not. <laughs> uh, and I think that Canadians and Americans get along pretty well, generally speaking. Um, that's because Canadians get along with everyone. Yeah, that's that, yeah. Maybe, maybe Americans do too. <laughs> um, I can't say I've had a lot of uh, interactions with South Africans. I've met a bunch in Israel, though. There's a really nice community here. You guys kind of vibe British for me, uh, whereas Australians definitely have their own flavor, I would say. And you kind of seem like, I mean, you were historically prisoners, right? <laughs> and like Not everyone. Of... <laughs> there was a really, a really select period of time when that happened. You know, it wasn't like, it hasn't resounded I, through history. I don't know. To me, Australians are kind of, I would say, culturally closer to Americans yeah. than to the Brits, would you agree? I was somewhere in the middle. I mean, uh, like like classically, like we were aligned with the British. There was a distinct pull away in the 20th century and we like focus more towards Americans. So we do like l literally sort of combine our systems to, to make. When Australia was formed, it was combined as a mix of Washington and London sort of models and that has really reflected yeah. in society. And we are a mix, but then also actually with a huge Asian influence that a lot of Australians don't like to admit, but uh, definitely is the case. And let me ask you this, because what is the difference between, or at least how do you differentiate um, Aussies and Kiwis? <sighs> Look, when I lived in, in Australia, like growing up there, that was one of the most important differences. They're like the, the, I don't know, the sibling that you like, sibling rivalry, you've got to hate. There were some expletive terms I'm, I'm not going to use on air that we like to, to refer to them. Uh, certain activities with sheep that we won't uh, reference <laughs> that we, we say regarding New Zealanders, um, but we'll keep it civil here on air. Um, but... I don't know. I mean, really, if we get down to the core of it, maybe they're like a bit more sort of chill, a bit more sort of liberal, a bit more relaxed. And like we consider ourselves isolated. Australia, we're physically and culturally very isolated from the rest of the world. But New Zealand, like, take that to the next level. Like they're just off doing their own thing. Just like I just think of New Zealanders as just like wandering through like hilly grasslands. That's just I, kind of I read this study that says that Australians are closer to Texans in nature and New Zealanders are closer to um, like British people but not city dwellers okay like, Mate, country a... country I have no as, as someone who has yeah, never lived in any of those places I yeah. have no idea what yeah. that means I haven't spent enough time <laughs> in Texas to make that assessment whether we're closer to Texans but uh, I don't know yeah I think they they definitely have like a, the whole of New Zealand has this sort of like country feel to it where they're just like running at a country pace uh -huh. that's interesting so All right. yeah, I resonate with the Australian, New Zealand uh, differences because mm -hmm. we, of course, you say British, you often think of English, and particularly the London accent. Yes. England also has fewer people than the US, but also a lot of diversity, particularly the Scottish and the Welsh and uh, the Northern Irish. Um, yeah, we also have common stereotypes towards the Welsh that sound pretty similar to yours towards <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the Kiwis. Um, Scots generally can't stand being referred to as English because yeah. um, they're not. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of differences within the UK as well. I think that's a podcast in itself. Absolutely. I mean, all, at least all of these countries, even, even if we kind of just uh, bunch up Australia and New Zealand, there's so many different parts of culture and different, like there's nothing similar or there's a lot of similarities, obviously, but you, it's very hard to bunch up New York and Alabama. Mm -hmm or uh, Scotland and uh, London. But what about South Africa? Because I have no idea what's going on there. And it seems like 
a hodgepodge of a lot of cultures. Uh, so South Africa, of course, I mean, we have 11 official languages, so that tells you how many cultures we have. Uh, it's not just that 11 languages are spoken there, there's more than 11, but 11 of them are official. Mm. Um, I think in relation to all the different nationalities here, I would say I kind of feel when I think about um, the British, like they're almost like parent figures. Um, Australians are kind of like almost like cousins. Maybe that's because all my cousins live in Australia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my cousins live in South Africa. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, um, we just migrate yeah, uh, yeah, across. Um, and Americans are kind of the Kim Kardashians. You see them on TV. It's this. It's the series that you watch, um, and you definitely know when they travel because you can hear them. Um, and then the Canadians are the people who are right by America, and they say a boat. Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> I, I can I can feel Shoshi's temperature <laughs> rising. <laughs> so, uh, actually, she said it probably the closest that I've ever heard anyone imitate. <laughs> <laughs> Americans imitate uh, Canadians. They say, oh, you guys all say a boot. Um, <laughs> and it's not quite pronounced like that. Yeah. So uh, I think like that's kind of how I see the relation. Um, I know that when I've traveled, um, I've always kind of resonated with British people. Um, and when I've been there, that's kind of like just felt homely uh, and similar. Um, and then the Australians, all my family and friends live there. So anyone who didn't move to Israel moved to Australia. Um, so it's, I think we're kind of cousins. We're, we're mm -hmm. very similar. We have the same sports, the same temperatures, mm -hmm. uh, climate, um, a lot of the same kind of food. So I think we're the most similar out of everyone. And Shoshi, you said, you, when we talked on the phone earlier, you said something that I thought was really profound about how culture uh, how Canada is uh, a tossed salad or how do you yeah it, uh, they say that Canada is like either a tossed salad or a mosaic um, and it's always in comparison to the United States which is referred to as the melting pot of cultures um, you go to the states and you're expected to become American and when you come to Canada from wherever um, you you're expected to you know, be somewhat conformed to Canadian culture, which is being polite and saying sorry a lot. But, um, <laughs> Come but to you South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Every second word. Sorry and shame. Yeah, yeah, we, we missed the shame part. Um, but, uh, yeah, to, to be Canadian is, like, is to maintain your, your identity and your culture. Um, and that, that's a really important point, though, because in Australia it's the same. Like, like Americans always have that, like, you know, it's the, the hyphenating, the Italian-American, uh, you know, Asian-American, African-American. In Australia, it's not generally like that. You are just of your place and you live in Australia. You don't necessarily take it on as a full-on identity. You don't take Australian as a full-on identity. I mean, people are patriotic to be sure, but it just doesn't reach those American levels of patriotism. It's very much like people who maybe two, three generations removed will still say, I am Cypriot, you know, whatever, or whatever, whatever the nationality is, and keep very, I am Greek. We have a strong Greek community in Australia, and they are, they are Greek. Like, it's, it's, they I just happen to live in Australia, and they love Australia, it's a, they love their country, but it's not that identity. I have a question, point. though, like, um, I think a lot about assimilation as someone who doesn't live in America anymore, and I live here, and is, is assimilation or the expectation of assimilation a bad thing? And what I mean to say is, like, in America, uh, yeah, there, I think there may be this expectation. Again, it's a really big country. It really depends on where you are. If you're in a place like New York or L.A., you're, I, I think you're not expected to assimilate the same way. But, like, um, maybe part of this thing we call the American dream, and that's another discussion, is this idea of becoming American. And it's not just about patriotism, but about um, becoming a part of the fabric of our society in a positive way. And so I'm curious if you assign a value judgment to this idea of assimilation. No, 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 totally. Just different approaches. I mean, Australia took a conscious step to mm -hmm. go for mul a multiculturalism approach, which mm -hmm. means your culture is totally respected. You do have to conform, conform to certain norms. But like, we're, we're a wash of, yeah, toss salad. Uh, but do you perceive Soshi, that Americans Soshi. don't respect the cultures of the people that live there? No, oh. just that they trend towards, they have this o this supranational culture, this sort mm -hmm. of like overarching culture of, mm -hmm. of American, which is really dominant. And not that you're... Exp it, know, it maybe I think it radiates yeah. towards other... Like if, if you go to New York, every there's a New Yorker type. Right. Be they, I don't know, a South Asian in ancestry exactly. or Italian or whatever. 
there's a uh, there's a type of person that you would call a New York and they say oh, what are you gonna do eh? yeah. and they don't have to be Italian or they don't have to be like you know they could come from wherever right. and preserve some of their culture but then there's also the New York culture which right. everybody kind of conforms into mm-hmm. and you were telling me that in in Toronto should I say Toronto or Toronto what's let's settle it let's settle it <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's Whatever you've been. So, <laughs> so, well, in it's Canada, in, Toronto. I'll say in Canada, uh, at least that's how I understand it, uh, there's, you don't, you, you say, sorry, maybe there's, it's, it's much more subtle, like mm-hmm. to become, uh, let's say Kim Kardashian is, is an Armenian American, but she's much more the LA type than she is the average of the Armenian American is, I think. So that's what I understand, that in America, there's a lot more inertia Right. You ju- you, yeah, I think everything that's the like best way for it. Inertia, like there just isn't that push in Australia, so generations can go by, and you can still keep that sort of initial identity you had when your grandparents, grandparents, whatever, immigrated. Whereas I feel like America trends towards you move towards that central identity of being American, which again, not a value judgment, just different approaches. Mm-hmm. I know. What about what about the UK? Yeah, I think uh, the UK is definitely similar to the the other English, not not the American way. Um, it's um, more multicultural and stressing each individual culture's values rather than an overarching British culture. Uh, but I do feel there's, in some ways, uh, a lot of people I know in the UK admire the American way. I think America did really well to embrace people and make them feel at home in America as Americans uh, in a way that perhaps when you emphasize British culture, I, uh, often uh, something that strikes me as I go around the States is you see American flags on homes. Mm. I think in the UK, if you were to see a British flag mm-hmm. on a home, it's much rarer and you probably draw inferences from the person's political views, totally. um, leaning probably to the right or the extreme right. Often it's not the case. You can be patriotic, of course, without, uh, without having those views, but you'd probably make those assumptions. Uh, whereas in the States, it's... You know, it's something far more uh, uniting, um, embracing the the country and patriotism. All right, let, let, let's uh, talk about like what unites you guys. So, when you travel or you meet other people from other English speaking countries, is there some sort of camaraderie that you feel, as opposed to when you feel someone whose native language is Russian or German or French, which which might be closer geographically to your country, but oh, this guy speaks my language, you know, so. Yeah. It's far more, con- uh, you know, immediately that, like the person speaks your language. So even if you're slightly more polite or slightly louder, we're still speaking the same language. Um, I think that culturally our mannerisms are very similar. Um, they vary slightly, but ultimately um, we're all kind of related in some way. The food we eat is very similar. Uh, the way we conduct ourselves, very similar. The language we speak is exactly the same, although Americans spell a bit differently. Um, I heard there's a reason for it. There is a there very is a reason. It's a that. very American reason. <laughs> well, we'll get to that. We'll yeah. get to that. We'll get there. We'll so, I mean, you all watch American movies, yeah. right? Everybody watches well, American yeah. movies. But that's one something I wanted to say as well. Yeah. I actually think American culture is kind of what unites us now. Like, maybe yeah. in the mid-20th century, there was a lot more British, whether it be music or, or TV or, or film culture. That's not as prevalent anymore. It's still there. But, but American culture, like, we all... Are watching Netflix or, or whatever it is and we're all I mean now a lot of people in the world are no matter where you're from but like like that sort of uniting American culture I can usually talk to other people from sort of the Anglo or English speaking world and be like oh yeah we watched this growing up or this kids show or whatever it came across Cartoon Absolutely. Network. I, I was, I was doing some research and I wanted to find like American slang that you might not know and everything I came across yeah. I said like everybody would probably know it right. because yeah. it's on this show or that show or this yeah. movie or that movie but I wanted to ask since we all watch American movies, American TV. It's so prevalent everywhere. But do you, for example, Asha, do you watch South African TV? Do you watch South African movies? Do you watch, I mean, also British British movies, I think, and I TV watch, is some, somewhat right. prevalent. Yeah, yeah, I don't watch that. Um, no, I don't think I watch any South African films. Uh, a bit of New Zealand and a bit of Australia. Like, they have their own little sort of usually kind of more indie cinema and cultural things, but... When I was little, I used to watch um, Australian soapies. I can't remember. I think the Neighbors. entrance was... Neighbors. That's yeah. a good Neighbors one. is an international hit for some reason. Uh, I have no yeah. idea why. Even I watch Neighbors. I mean, I, I, I didn't was, watch it. I knew like, of that it, is, though. Yeah. That is trash television in Australia. Like, it's quality trash television, but, like, why that yeah. went across <laughs> out of the country? You have Brits traveling to Australia just to go to Ramsey yeah, Street to yeah. take a, a photo <laughs> so by the weird. side. For, so weird. I mean, yeah. I guess it gave us Chris Hemsworth, so we shouldn't complain, but... Uh, right, yeah. so I watched that. Um, obviously, I watch American TV. 
and I watch British. Me too. I, I, I quite yeah, like lots British. of British TV. Um, I don't think um, much South African TV has made it across the world. I don't know. But would you watch it at home? Would you watch South African um, TV at home? So I was on TV mm. in South Africa. Okay, um, huh. So I, I watched the stuff I was on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I <laughs> wouldn't necessarily ask anybody else to watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, give us um, give us a recommendation. Yeah, yeah, what's like your favorite uh, <laughs> South African um, movie that you think would represent oh, the culture or just was worth a watch? Really well, uh, e lollipop. Oh, so Leon Schuster. Leon Schuster is hilarious. Uh, he's a local comedian and he makes local movies. Um, they slapstick. Um, but if you want to see like South African culture at its best and us ripping ourselves off, uh, he's really good. So um, he made one sh shortly after apartheid ended called There's a Zulu on my stoop. A stoop is like a, uh, oh, what's a stoop in English? It's like the stairs. It's like a terrace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the it like a little balcony kind of thing in front of your house. And it was um, a satire about like, um, obviously we all know that it, during apartheid South Africa, blacks and whites had to be completely separate. So this was a satire about now there being a Zulu, which is uh, one of the biggest African cultures in South Africa, being on his um, balcony, porch. on his porch, that's mm -hmm. the word. Uh, and it's really funny and it's really cool. And uh, I think that it won a lot of awards actually. Go watch that one. I, l I love m watching movies and I saw a movie called District 9 Yes. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's uh, I forgot the name of the director. I think Neil Blomkamp. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and and he collaborated with uh, with uh, Peter Jackson from New Zealand. And as someone from Israel, I thought, okay, there must be some kind of like secret handshake between uh, South Africans and New Zealanders when they meet. They have this like special bonds, but I guess uh, you've no, proven me wrong. They just happen to be friends. And they're probably w something in Hollywood. Like, that's the thing. They yeah. probably went through the, the melting probably. pot of Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. probably funneled everything yeah, through yeah, Hollywood exactly. anyway. All right. Uh, we're going to move on to the next segment, which I call... English, motherfucker, do you speak it? <laughs> And now we're going to talk about that. What that unites you also tells you guys apart. So, for example, how would you call this, Rebecca? A bathing suit. A bathing suit, and you would call it boardies. Okay. Boardies. Mm -hmm. Board shorts. A swimming suit. <laughs> swimming trunks. trunks. Oh. All right. Trunks. What so about? <laughs> How would you call this piece of uh, oh, man. clothing? Yeah, that was a terrible Go on, name. go on, <laughs> say it. You know the one we're going for. <sighs> it's a wife beater. <laughs> uh, singlet. Vest. A tank top. Vest again. A vest. Oh. All right. How do you call this letter, the last letter of the alphabet? Z. 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 <laughs> I didn't expect that. American <laughs> Okay, how about this? Flip flop. Yeah, I deserve no no bad like badness for this, but we do call them thongs. Yeah, <laughs> slip slops. Slip slops. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. Interesting. We actually were in Canada. We're a little. Have confused. you ever seen something like that, Shoshi? <laughs> they wear it. Warm <laughs> We have like a month of. Water. Yeah. Um, we, I think we're a little confused as often Canadians are with their mm -hmm. identity. Um, and we, they're either flip flops or they're tongs um, or thongs. All right. We've called them both, okay. definitely. Yeah, the Brits and the Americans are aligned, they're flip flops. Flip -flops. I, got, I got a fun one though. Uh, uh, New Zealanders call them jandals. Jandals. Yeah, I have no idea where that comes from. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And these flip flops. You know, you know the word in Hebrew, right? No. Kaf kaf. Kaf kaf. All right. How would you call this? thing you float on in, in the pool. <laughs> a lalo. A lalo. A uh, lalo. Yeah, 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 maybe a lalo. Floaty thing. A floaty? A floaty, yeah. yeah. A, floaty. a floaty or a yeah. lalo. All right. And what about these shoes? They're S called? Sneakers. Runners. Tackies. Sneakers. Trainers. Trainers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How do you call these drinks? Cold well, drinks. in America, there's a, at least two. You're going to hear soda or pop. Yeah. Soft drinks in Australia. Yeah, just cold drinks. I think, I think all of the above for Canada. Yeah. <laughs> we call it fizzy drinks. Fizzy drinks. All right. Yeah, okay. That too. We also call them yeah bubbly <laughs> things. Canada. And what are these? <laughs> French fries. Chips. Chips. French fries. Chips. Sounds the majority. Mm. <laughs> and these are. Also chips. Also chips. Also chips. Oh, crisps. Yeah. Those are crisps. They're crisps. And you guys call them crisps. Chips. Chips. All right. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. Um, 
what one more one more question. Do you say data or data? Data. Data. Both. Both? Data. <laughs> data. <laughs> There's no uh, yeah. there's no, no rhyme or reason. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see if you tomato. Let's tomato. see if you guys can guess some uh, some slang. I'm gonna okay. give you guys some slang that I found on the internet. Mm -hmm. Some even if it's your slang, then uh, don't if say it's anything. Our slang, be quiet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's start okay. with Australian slang. Who knows what akadaka is? What should I say? Or should no, I no, no. Uh, okay. uh, no idea. ACDC. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What about? Their house. And if yeah. I'm mis if I'm mispronouncing yeah. it, you tell me, Asha. Okay. What does tea mean? Tea, tea. like hot tea with milk. And tea. It, it's spelled the same, but it, I I'm, I was told it means something different, slightly oh. different in Australia. Oh, not t-shirt. Yeah. Asha. I mean, I'd like maybe dinner. You mean? Dinner. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, it's like from the British. What is a chewy? Oh, I think I know. Gum. That's true. Yeah. And a mozzie? Oh, mosquito. Oh, you guys know He's that. All right. Yeah. All right, let's let's move over to the UK. Okay. Um, when you say braces, what do you mean? On your teeth. Or, 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 or suspender lace. braces. All right, okay, so which one is it? Is it suspenders it's or? Both. It's both? Yeah, yeah. All right. What is a knicker? Underwear. Knicker. Underwear. Oh, yeah. you know yeah. that. And a coach? A bus? A bus. A bus. A bus. Mm. So, uh, British culture has uh, yeah, been it's, everywhere. It's around, yeah. All right. I'm going to try some American slang. Also, the, uh, by the way, you said pants earlier when, when we say trousers. Yeah. Uh -huh. but for us, pants is obviously something yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, underwear. It's yeah. underwear. Yeah, so yeah. that can yeah. Uh, lead to certain mis yeah, that miscommunication. Yeah, that has led to serious <laughs> miscommunication. <laughs> I've had that problem. The situation is not for air and for discussion, but... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to try some American slang. Obviously, I had to find, I had to really like dig, dig deep. deep. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. see if, I Let's know see if you know. Yeah. Okay, what is cattywampus? I have... I Maybe it's like deep flyover state slang. Yeah. It's supposed to be crooked or worn down. I had okay. no idea, guys. Yeah. What is a flake? Oh, that's a like dodgy person. Yeah, somebody like cuts person. out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, nice. What does it mean um, to jump the shark? Take a risk, just like leap of faith sort of yeah. thing. Well, it's, it's when a TV show goes completely off the rails <laughs> and trying to get new audience and okay. something crazy something happens. Crazy. Yeah. Is that this ends in fire, I'm right? We light the place too. on fire. Something like that. Uh, what is to go Dutch? Oh, oh good one. split the ball. 50 yeah. 50. Nice. Very nice. nice. We've never heard that. Yeah, what is a, go Dutch. What is yeah. a podunk? <laughs> Rebecca? I'm not sure which one. Which version are you going with? <laughs> no, come on. I'll, I'll make it easy. <laughs> well, <laughs> according, to, according to my research, it's a small town. Yeah, a podunk town. Yeah, okay. it's not a nice thing. All right. Yeah. How about Canada? Are you ready, Shoshi? Ready. Okay. <laughs> what is what is a loony and a toonie? <laughs> oh, they're money. It's money. Yeah. It's small nice. money. Nice. Very yeah. good. But, I, I, but that's not s slang. That's really what they're called. <laughs> 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 they're like weird. <laughs> they're coins. Wait, which one is, is it? The one one and the coin, and one is it? Yeah, a loony and a toonie. What is it? And on the loony, there's a picture of a loon. It does say. Oh, it does say loony and toonie. And the toonie has a polar bear. Okay. And you have the queen on your coins as and well. And we also yeah. always have the queen so on the other side. You want a loony, one has a picture of the queen on it? Yeah, oof. Wow. wow. Yeah. Disrespect. Wow. Yeah. What is what is a Pull Chesterfield? Chesterfield is a cigarette. Yeah. All right, Shoshi. No idea. It's a couch. It's a couch. <laughs> but Just no any one says it. No one, no one says it. Or any couch. Like what? a like a Hoover's vacuum? Yeah. Mm. I think it might actually yeah, have like origins it in it, but I I am on air. I don't know. And what is a two four? Mm, it's the, the size of a two by four, like the wood. No, no, no. It's not the size of wood. There's another. Uh, I think it's it's like very Canadian in it's nature. Super Canadian. What? Yeah. Well, like all the things that are two by snow. four. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something about being cold. Maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> it's beer. It's beer. A oh, it's, it's a oh, beer. It's a yeah. Yeah. beer. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And w I'll tell you what, when I researched uh, South African slang, yeah. there were just so many. Yeah. I just, mm. I was overwhelmed. I couldn't <laughs> even choose. Like yeah. thousands. There's like 50, 50 Australian slang words that you have to know before right. you fly. 50 Canadian words. And then South Africa is like 2,500 yeah. words you have to know before. We kind of have our own language. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a yeah. sort of weird so form of English. Speaking of, do you speak Afrikaans? Uh, I probably speak more Hebrew now than I did mm. ever speak Afrikaans. Um, I can swear. 
Uh, That's important. Yeah, yeah. You've got the important thing. You always learn <laughs> yeah. that first. Uh, Do you know how to swear in Hebrew? Yeah. Good. <laughs> I knew that before I got here. Mm. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, I know some Afrikaans. You know some. Yeah, I know a few words. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I impressed them. The first thing you know is it's, it's, it's like close to Dutch, Dutch, right? It's yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. So like, um, I think a lot of our slang. I think the the first thing that anybody learns or picks up is that South Africans say "How's it?" Mm. Um, mm. And that's kind of like from "Who harmed it?" Which is how does it go? Um, so we won't like say how are you? Yeah. So okay. we won't say hi, how are you? We'll be like, how's it? It becomes all in one. Um, Everyone's China, right? Yeah. Everyone's well, China or but or oak or bra. <laughs> just a few. Just what a few. Just <laughs> <laughs> a few for my friend. Um, I'm trying to, trying to think of uh, something else that's, I guess, very South African. Um, is the difference between now, just now, and now, now, mm. they're all very different. Uh -huh. uh, Interesting. So, I'll see you now means I'm literally getting in the car. That's what I miss. Getting mm. in the car. Uh, I'm getting in the car and I'm coming now. Um, I'll see you now, now means um, I'll see you anywhere between like five minutes and half an hour. And <laughs> I'll see you just now means anywhere between half an hour and five hours. Wow. So wow. Maybe so kind of like in Spanish, you say ahora when you, when you mean somewhere in the near future and say ahorita when you mean like I'm getting in the car like yeah. right now. I'm coming now is like expecting in the next five minutes. All right, last question on this segment. Um, you know, you've, you've all been to Israel. You know, Israelis, when they speak English, they use the Hebrew inflection when they ask yeah. questions, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Especially WH questions. But, mm -hmm. um, but I heard that Americans and British people, they, they inflect the questions differently. Mm -hmm. So you would ask, how do you ask the, the, the question, are you hungry? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? No, no, it's because you heard no, me I do it. Yeah. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Americans yeah. say, yeah. yeah. So I, I heard Americans say, are you hungry? And then yeah. British people, they say, are you hungry? Or, yeah, yeah, that's a, wow. that hungry. felt British when you said it like that. Yeah. Yeah. But Australians have a problem that we inflect up at the end of everything. I, I've, I don't do it anymore because I've, cause it, but like there's a, a thing for a very Australian accent that just inflects up at the end of every sentence and it just makes it sound like you're asking questions all the time. That was <laughs> so we have a, a standing joke that in South Africa you can tell when somebody's been traveling overseas because when they come back for the first day or two, they inflect up at the Whoa. end. You know that you're speaking to America. Because you never inflect up? Or? No, not really. Oh, interesting. It, it, it is confusing in the beginning. And normally Canadians are like pretty cool with everyone's culture, but I even had a hard time in the beginning when I first met anyone from like with a different accent um, with that inflection and I wasn't sure what was going on if it was a question like should I answer pause I don't know what to do here <laughs> all right we're gonna wrap this part up but just before you do I know Rebecca you can do a mean southern accent that is true so let's hear that <laughs> you gotta Wait, say you something high class or low uh, class why not wow. yeah just like working class uh, working, working class, class Montgomery Alabama I'd like to order uh, a burger with cheese, onions. Oh, this is so American. <laughs> <laughs> I want and, a burger with cheese uh, and onions. Sounds pretty good. French fries. All right. <laughs> and, what, and, and Jesse, can you can you do a Scottish accent or is that? Oh, I can try and give uh, a wee bit of Scottish. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, and it will be hard for me to go back to the London accent. <laughs> <laughs> You went tasteful. You didn't go like like deep <laughs> Glasgow or anything. <laughs> and we're now going to move into our rapid fire questions. I'm going to ask one, one question and you're all going to respond just as fast as you can with your respective culture. Um, I know there's a lot to choose from, Rebecca, but give me one movie, one American movie that represents American culture more than anything. Uh. Rapid fire, Ooh, rapid fire. Can we rapid fire this way? <laughs> no. Uh, First thing that comes Godfather. to mind. Godfather. Good call. <laughs> the original Mad Max. Independence Day. We followed the Americans for this. <laughs> <laughs> but just for the record, um, American films are often made and produced in Canada. This oh. is true. All right. Mm -hmm. Lock, stock, and two smoking bags. Oh, I love that. Well, yeah. That's great. That's wonderful. All right, if you guys could import one, the, your, the food you miss the most that you can't find anywhere else. Uh, I'm going to apologize for changing the question to include food and drink. So I can Go say for tea, it. Tea, of oh. course. Oh, yeah. Real tea. Yeah. Tea is so good. It's terrible here. Uh, maple syrup for the Canadian. Bolton. 
Yeah. Yeah. Wait, explain that because <laughs> yeah. that's the first time I've ever heard that. What? It's oh, delicious. It's the best. Oh. Okay, well, good meat in general. Um, I miss good meat in general. But bultong is um, a certain kind of meat uh, that you hang up. It's, it's hung up and it's, um, it's raw meat and it's dried under a light, but it's heavily spiced. <laughs> and uh, oh, my mouth's boring. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, you can get different variations. So you can get the sliced one and you can, then you can get chili bites, which is sliced with chili, or you can get stockies, which is the meat. Um, it like shrivels up into just a stick of dried meat. And um, that's generally drier if you don't like it so fatty. <laughs> and then there's dry vorse, which is like, um, it's dried burvos, which is, I guess, another South African meat. Um, it's like a sausage. Um, but it's like candy almost. No. It's like a jerky. It's, a, it's, like, it's like, a like a jerky, but it's like a it's no, not sweet, not in a sweet way, but like you eat it like you chew it's on like, it. Like, it's a normal. snack. Yeah. This is snack. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so good when we were watching, s- yeah, <laughs> when we were watching, uh, we actually use it for kids that are teething. Mm. Um, mm. Oh, lucky kids. <laughs> Start young. Lucky Start kids. young with the beef. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. Um, but like we watch it, we eat it when we're watching sports or um, in the car. Uh, we just eat it all the time. I guess it's a snack and it's a healthy snack. All right. A healthy snack. Asha? Um, um, the standard if answer would be Vegemite, but I've got a better one, which is kangaroo, which it may people might, that upsets a lot of internationals, <laughs> but we have too many kangaroos in Australia and they taste so good. They're 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 related to to deer, right? So they're not related. I mean, they, I mean, the meat is very like deer meat. It's they're not. It's like it's like this rich, dark, lean meat. You just you barely cook it, and you almost eat it like sashimi. Uh, sort of uh, closer to deer, like really okay. like that rich venison-y like flavor. You eat like this much and you're full. I mean, I don't judge. We eat springbok yeah, and ostrich exactly. and crocodile and all of that. And oh, oh, so wild I can't, game. Uh, I don't, oh. but yeah. There's, Kangaroos. So you get, also you get wild um, game biltong, um, uh-huh. which I don't like. It's very meaty, but yeah, so I don't judge. We... Um, I'm heading right to the supermarket. Yeah. I would. Uh, speaking of supermarkets, I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna say that I would just like to have a Trader Joe's here. I miss the supermarket. Sorry to hijack the question. Yeah, a way to change the whole game. <laughs> Sorry, but we'll go big or go home. Just you know, everything, basically. America. 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 everything yeah. in Trader Joe's <laughs> here. <laughs> All right, last question, and you may need time to think about it, but. What is a dead giveaway that someone is from your country when you see them abroad? Oh, God. I know. All right, yeah. let's go. go. Um, uh, Canadians walk around with a Canadian pin on their bags. <laughs> they do. Always. They do. Well, it's a, a thing. Flag. Do you know why? It's so, yeah, so today, <laughs> wait. wait, about this flag, today I went to Gay Pride and it was a lot of fun and uh, a group of Canadians uh, walked past me with these flags and I was speechless. I was so excited. And because the Canadians are super nice, they immediately handed me the flag and I've been walking around with it all day and I'm, I'm still really happy about it. Um, but yeah, Canadians traveling abroad um, will always have a pin. Um, is that just small. to prove they're not American? Yes. That's what I always thought. It's yeah. just like, hey, by it the way, is. I'm not American. I may sound like it. It is, 100%. <laughs> and, and for that reason, also, there are many Americans who walk around with Canadian pins. <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cheeky. Mm-hmm. Nice. No, that's a cheat. Wow. All right. South Africans will generally be wearing one of our sports tops. <laughs> the rugby shirt or the, mm. or the not soccer, our soccer team is useless. Um, sorry. Uh, rugby shirt or a cricket shirt generally will be a dead giveaway or will be carrying um, a K-Way bag, which is like the Jan Sport equivalent in South Africa. Um, we like those too. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So that's generally you're a South African, um, you're wearing a sport shirt or we're, um, we, we speak and we hear each other and then the, we're the two like on the, on the pavement sidewalk that are jumping up and down excited that we found somebody <laughs> like us. All right. Brits, um, apologize, give them an excuse to apologize, and they definitely will. Bump into them in the street, very obviously, or just push them in the street <laughs> and see if they apologize to you for being pushed. Uh, for being in the way. How do you yeah. say it? Can you pronounce it for us? Being pushed? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, the apology. Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. Because yeah. oh. yeah. it's a pretty easy way to identify a Canadian, yeah. too. The sorry. Yeah. So yeah. We say excuse me. All right, you guys had time to think. Oh man, I don't even know. Like, what do Australians do? We're just sort of like, like I want, I, my my first instinct was to say we're like usually a, like a little like dirtier 
than most other Anglos. And I don't mean that like necessarily dirty, but we just like kind of get into the muck a little bit more. I was going to say drunk. Yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> drunk too. We do love to drink. I feel like the British also like to drink. I don't know, but no, Australians really like to drink. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe drink. Yeah, all right. And that's Sorry. just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah see, I, I, I had too much to drink last night and I couldn't remember. So fortunately, my South African cousin here explained to me. <laughs> um, well, you can hear us. So we know yeah, where we are. That's true. So it comes in handy. <laughs> like we talked before, we yeah. said that um, Americans, everybody th says Americans are loud. Obviously, Israelis are super yeah, loud. Like guys, yeah. we're but in they're Israel. Not, they're not the same. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not what at all. I think. That's what I, I was I, at a bar the other yeah. night, and I, I've never done this, but I had to ask the Americans next to me to quiet down in a bar. Yeah. I, I, but I couldn't hear myself. Have you guys been to the States? You haven't. I haven't. You no. haven't. No. Have you? I, yes. Have you? I've only been to the States of all these countries. I'm, oh, I'm curious because when you're in the States, mm. everything does it feel loud? loud? It's yeah. all relative, yeah. right? So it yeah. feels right. loud it does to you. Feel loud, yeah. Interesting, because really? to me, you also go into restaurants and people yeah. in other tables mm. will start conversations with you. Yeah, we like to chat. To we like to make friends with other people who you don't know. Which totally, is which really is a which is a total no no for for yeah. Brits. Yeah. Right, no, so you South Africans do that. Won't. We're very well known for doing that as like well. Like for chatting, yeah. yeah, chatting and getting to know people. Mm -hmm. South Africans, um, I guess, white South Africans and Zulus and Kozas very much so. Um, are known for opening their homes up to random strangers. Wow. Um, it's, it's, it's part of our cultures. So uh, you're always welcome um, if you go into certain areas. If you go to a Zulu home and they find out you're from like out of town or from anywhere, you are welcome. You're sleeping there. You're going to come to the wedding that's happening tomorrow. Um, so that's very much a South African thing. But I always thought, and I haven't been to America, so this is really just my own made-up story in my head. From the movies. Yeah, yeah. is that Americans are slightly louder. They want you to know that they're American. Americans are very proud to be American. Um, and it's, it's... I don't like to use the word arrogance, but you... When you in school, you learn about America. You know where every state is. I don't know where any state is. I must be honest. Mm. Um, but you only learn, or you mostly learn American history, um, whereas we're learning world history. So I think you're quite proud to be American. You want to be heard. Yeah, I suggest you all come visit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot I to mean, see, uh, and I think you'd be really surprised about how um, how many different kinds of Americans there are. Like it's not the movies. You know, it's it's like real life. And uh, yeah, and so whatever just it is, it just, out, just own it. I mean, yeah. it's listen. It's okay. I own being loud, but I don't own the arrogance. I do think no, it's I pride. Think I also well. think that, like, unlike Europe, you know, n like, well, these days nationalism is a little tricky. But I do think that in America, you know, patriotism is not seen as something threatening. It's yeah. seen as something very kind of like um, wonderful that connects us. It's not something that's meant to push people out. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all the time we have today. And as you know, this is a young podcast and we do need all the help we can get to spread out the word. So if you like culture and you have friends who like culture, please like us, share us on Facebook and on YouTube. Every little bit helps. We'd also love to hear from you on all our social media channels. Tell us about the topics you, you'd like to hear. Or if you've listened to one of our episodes and you have a question or you can tell us something about your culture, I think I could speak for all of us when I say we'd love to hear that. Also, if you are currently living or traveling in Israel and you want to be a guest on our show, don't be shy. Just write us an email at crossingculturespodcast at gmail.com and we'll see you next time. Bye.